Hello, hello, thanks for tuning in. All right, today we are gonna check and see what the output of a 100 to 120 watt solar panel is on a rainy day. We've got some panels set out, your traditional fixed one here. This is a uh, Renogy. Then we have a folding Bouge RV or a SIGS 360 rolling one. And all the links will be in the description and videos for links above. We got the Agway 120 watt folding solar panel. And then we got a Harbor Freight 100 watt solar panel. This is the oldest one that we have. So we've, we're gonna hook it up to our little DIY power box here. That thing has 300 and, well 300 watts of MPPT solar charging capability. So this is gonna give the best output that you can get. And we'll see exactly what we're getting here on a rainy day. It's been raining for over a day now. So we're gonna get everything set up and plugged in and see what we get. All right, we got the Harbor Freight panel up first. Again, this is the oldest solar panel we've had. We've had it for several years. Um, this is coming through their standard SAE connection into an MC4 adapter. Be aware and be careful of the polarity. All the other panels are correct, but the, the Harbor Freight solar panel uses SAE connectors and it's backwards. So just make sure you have a meter to check everything. And it's about 12 noon, so sun is right above us. And let's see what we get. All right, we're bringing in a whopping 6.5 watts, a half amp. Now that is coming through an MPPT charge controller. So it's about what you're getting out of a 100 watt panel when there is absolutely no sun and overcast and rain. I'm gonna angle the panel a little bit and we'll see if we get an increase or decrease on uh, efficiency. This is leaning it up. Looks like we're losing efficiency, gain some back. That's almost at a 90 degree angle. And now we're gonna lean it all the way back. Looks like you got a little more. And we lean it almost flat with the ground. About a half amp there. So that's the Harbor Freight. 100 watt solar panel. We're gonna switch it now to the Renogy 100 watt solar panel. All right, we got the Renogy 100 watt solar panel set up. We're bringing in about three watts. It's at the same angle the Harbor Freight one is. We're gonna lean it up now. way worse. Now we're coming back down. All right. I believe the Harbor Freight one was getting about a half amp as well, so this is 0.4. And this is all the way almost flat with the ground, maybe about 20 degree angle if that. Yeah, so that's all we're gonna see is about 0.4, there's 0.5. So the Harbor Freight panel and the Renogy panel are putting out about the same, so six, almost six and a half watts out of 100, so it's still not good. All right, this is the Bouge RV SIGS panel. This is the panel that's flexible and super thin, some type of new technology. We'll see if it's any better than the tried and true technology. All right, we're right up to, right around the same. So we'll move this around as well.
this panel's a bit more difficult to move because of how long it is. So the thing we're noticing with this panel is there's not much of a change when moving it. I mean, there is a change, but it happens gradually versus quickly. So again, that half amp range around five to six watts. So we'll see, uh, let's lay it flat and see what happens. That's totally flat on the ground. And we're getting 0.6, so this is doing the the best at 7.89 watts, 0.6 amps coming in. That's laying totally flat on the ground. So maybe we'll come back through and try the other ones totally flat. See what happens. So, so far the Bouge RV is doing the best. It is also the longest panel in length, but the thinnest. Now we're gonna switch to the Ogway folding solar panel. I believe that one does 120 watts is what they rated at. All right, this is the Ogway folding solar panel. We checked the connection on this and it seems to be correct. So we're gonna go ahead and plug it in. And this one's rated at 120. Wow. 0.7, this is doing the best. Nine watts coming in out of this Agway solar panel. What a surprise. This is the smallest out of the panels that we tested here as far as size goes. Wattage, it's the most, so we would expect more, but we, I wasn't expecting it at all. So we're gonna go ahead and move it around and see if we can get some more. About 90 degrees parallel with the ground. So we're gonna come back now. Getting down to a low angle, about 20 degrees. And we're flat on the ground. So still pulling about eight watts. So it's, I guess if you scale it down, all the other ones are 100 watts, this is a, a 120. That's where you're seeing the difference because it is higher wattage. So more watts equals more power and rain. But yeah, not too bad. All right, so here's how wildly it can vary when it rains out. This is the Harbor Freight panel hooked up just on its own legs. And as you can see, the raindrops are coming down. It is very, very, very cloudy out. So, right there, 15 watts. I'm gonna hook the other ones up again real quick and check it. All right, that's the energy one. So 0.9, 11.8 watts coming in. That's the Agway 120. So as you can see, it can vary wildly, even if they're at that same angle, just with different times when it's raining. When it gets a peak through the cloud or something that you don't notice, it'll pick it up. We also wanted to add this in. Currently, this is a 400 watt Harbor Freight system on the roof of this house. And we're only getting 45 and a half watts in to give you an idea. So that is about what you're gonna get off a 100 watt panel. You know, it really, it really just depends. That's with no load. As you can see, it doesn't change very much with no load. And the load is just a small inverter and a little fan. Okay, we're gonna take a look at the four solar panels we tested and talk about them, starting with the Harbor Freight one right here. This one lists right now for $129.99. They used to be $99.99 couple years ago, but they went up in price. 
This is a 100 watt monocrystalline solar panel. The manufacturer states that you can get up to 500 watt hours, 31 amp hours a day with a max amp of 6.2. So we did test these things. We've had them for a few years. They are great solar panels. They're small. They have little legs in the back. The only downside to this thing is the SAE connector as it's not an industry standard. MC4 is what all these other three panels have. And that is an industry, industry standard. So in the rain, the Harbor Freight panel averaged about a half amp or 6.58 watts. So six and a half watts is what we were getting out of this thing with no sun in the rain. So 6% efficient in the rain. Again, no sun. This is the worst possible conditions we can see. This was right after our hurricane. So six watts is better than no watts in anybody's case. All right, the next panel we're going to look at in the same category here is the Renogy one. The Renogy one is also a 100-watt monocrystalline panel, and as you can see, it's much taller. It does not have legs. This has the MC4 connections, so it's a single panel. Um, it's rated at anywhere between 33 and 40 amp hours a day. Four to 500 watt hours is what they claim. The efficiency is about 91%. And what we've seen was, all right, so the short circuit amps are 5.21. And the optimum operating, if you were getting full power, would be about 5 amps. This one we've seen also 0.5 amps, 6.58 watts. So this solar panel did exactly the same as the Harbor Freight solar panel. Right now, the Renogy panel lists for $92.99 shipped on Amazon. So this is cheaper than the Harbor Freight panel. Even uh, after taxes, this will still be cheaper and shipped to your front door. The only difference is you're not getting legs and the Renogy one's a little bit bigger. Now we're going to go into this Ogway 120 watt folding solar panel. Again, this is a monocrystalline portable solar panel. This is an expensive solar panel, but it is portable. And this one claims to put out 120 watts. At, let's see what the manufacturer says for amperage here. Twenty two point eight percent efficient. Six point zero five amps max is what this thing will put out. We seen the highest average wattage out of all of these panels. Again, this panel is rated at 20 watts higher than these other three. So 120 watt panel, we've seen 0.7 amps, 9.21 watts. So the highest out of all the panels. And again, this is the highest wattage of the panels, but the smallest and most portable out of all the panels. The next panel we're going to talk about is the Bouge RV SIGS panel, this long one here. This is the lightest and thinnest of all the panels, but it is the longest. So this is more geared towards being flat on a roof or a curved surface maybe. So this is a SIGS technology panel, copper indium gallium sel sel selenide if i'm pronouncing that right correct me in the comments if i'm not sigs for short this is a truly flexible panel uh, it's extremely lightweight it is thin it's waterproof out of this panel we've seen 0.6 amps or 7.90 watts so this was doing better than the two monocrystalline panels right here. This new SIGS technology had just a couple more watts. So in the rain, any type of wattage you can get is going to be great. So we had some max outputs that we also caught. The Harbor Freight solar panel actually came out on top on that one at 1 1.2 amps, 15.80 watts. Then the Renogy came in behind that at 0.9 amps, 
0.85 watts. And then the Agway panel here was 0 0.67.90 watts, as well as the SIGS panel was right around 0 0.7 watts, or 0.7 amps as well. So overall, what can we gain from this? The more wattage that you have in bad weather, the more power you're going to get. So a 100 watt panel in really crappy weather is not going to do much for you. Maybe run an LED light bulb if you're lucky. So you'll have to have a bigger array, a, bit, a bigger battery bank to hold that power. But yeah, overall, each panel is going to have a different application. This one here is very portable. This one here is lightweight, flexible, can be put around curves. This is more of a roof or ground mount system. And this one here is semi-portable with the legs. So what you can see is they're about, you know, 5 to 10% efficient in the rain. So use that as a better judgment to figure out which panel is right for you. Hope this helps. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.